in a second. Hey, I want to welcome our podcast viewers. I'm Podcast Pete, and on the on the podcast is a person that explained to me a concept that immediately I understood. I, I've always understood 80-20, not always, yeah. but I have understood the concept. But when when Neil started with sardines and whales, it was like, dang, that's good. So, Neil, yeah. I want you to tell our viewers who you are, what you do, and who you serve, and then we'll get into our podcast. Okay, Pete, thank you very much for having me again. Neil O'Brien, I'm based uh, near the Blarney Stone in, in Ireland. Uh, Anyone who kisses it gets the gift of the gab. So we get a lot of American tourists over here. Um, so yeah, um, I call myself a recovering accountant. Okay. I trained as a cost and profitability accountant. Did that for years, worked in London for a while. I worked in Florida for a year um, and then came back to Ireland, started my own consulting business. I, I started my own consulting business because I stumbled on 8020 when I was working as an accountant and it just totally blew my mind. I was just absolutely amazed at the power of it. Um, the 82 whales and sardines, when uh, I discovered one of my clients uh, had 36 customers and when I crunched the numbers, three of them were giving them 91% of net profits. <laughs> sure. 18 of them were losing money. Um, so from that day, that's the very precise moment I can pinpoint the exact moment I knew my days as an accountant were numbered because I thought I need to go spread the gospel <laughs> on 8020 whales and sardines. So that's a little quick summary of my background, Pete. I might just grab a little, um, I'm a bit shiny there on the screen. I just have a little, um, I'm just going to grab a, um, a, a okay. thingy there for a moment. Yeah, and I, I, I want to share with our viewers why Neil's maybe, maybe. stepped away yes, for a shiny. second. Shiny. You know, Jeff Borshawa introduced us, and he's a former recovering, what did you call it, a recovering accountant? Accountant. accountant. Yeah. And so I think, you know, you guys have similar stories, but not the same, obviously. Yeah. You looked at a lot of businesses, and you saw patterns that were developing. You have gone on the, the journey of really explaining it in simple terms. When I first we first had a podcast. I went, dang, because I saw your LinkedIn profiles. They were so graphically clear that my brain, as simple as it is, understood it. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we want our viewers to really, you know, you've heard 80-20. Everybody knows in business probably what that is, mm -hmm. but they don't know the strategies that that are so important. So let's let's talk to our viewers. We want to give them the three things that they can take away. So what would be your first thought that, and when you're working with clients, mm. what are you trying to do with them? Yeah, um, we have a bonus one. We have four actually. So the first thing we say, um, Pete, is to uh, you need to do some analysis to actually calculate the whales and sardines. And what you want to try and do is do a you know people might know profit and loss, but profit and loss is like your sales. Minus your total cost, you have a net profit at the bottom, yeah? So most companies will look at that for, you know, let's say for the year. Um, what you want to do is take that and split it out by your client. And it takes a little bit of analysis. What you'll end up with is you'll have a clear picture of your whales, your profitable whales, and your loss-making sardines, and you'll have a bunch of others in the middle. So that's step one is to work out the whales and sardines. Once you've done that, then we have three main strategies to grow substantially grow your profits you know without the data at the beginning you're just kind of guessing because when you yeah. said on an earlier podcast you think that a person that brings in a lot of sales is going to be a sardine but not so because sales don't you can't take sales to the bank. You take that's a whale, profit. actually. I think you mean yeah. you said a lot of sales is a sardine. Well, people think a lot yeah. of sales is a whale. Yes. That's what you mean. Sorry, Pete. So yeah. what when you're working with people, what what are you seeing like after you do that analysis and you come back to them? What what what's that conversation like? Well, there's often uh, a bit of there's it's not quite the so the four stages of grief, but when, 
when I do the analysis and I'm showing a business owner, okay, let's say if there's 100 customers or clients, we say maybe 20 of them, 15, 20 of them are profitable, maybe 30 out of 100 are losing money, okay? So imagine say to a business owner and showing it to them because now you've worked it out, it's there in black and white in front of them that three out of 10 of their clients are losing money. And when they look at it, it's like there's always some, I call them sacred cows in there, okay? There's always like the favorite always, you know, they're with us from day one and they're a good client and whatever. Of course, they're a good client because when they phone, everybody drops everything to go look after them, okay? So then what they don't realize is that there's a cost to this. Um, so this, the favorite client or sometimes the favorite son or daughter uh, can be losing money. So the first thing is, you know, you're going to get resistance from people because you, you they don't, this is a bit of a shock, okay? It's a shock to find out that these people, all these clients you're dealing with for years that you thought were profitable, they're actually losing your money. So there is, look, it's a, it's a natural human reaction. And uh, I always, you know, I expect that it's going to be there. And you just have to leave people you know, maybe I always leave them sit with the information for a week or two, leave them think about it and process it and go back to them. And then the three main strategies we do, Pete, are the first thing I always prioritize is once you know your whales, you want to sell more to them. So like the IT company I worked with realized that lawyers and solicitors were their biggest, most profitable clients. So straight away you're saying, what else can we offer them? How else can we help them? So that's the first thing you want to do. And the second thing is you want to focus your marketing and finding new whales. So no longer, you're not going after everybody and anybody like most people do. That IT company realized that lawyers and solicitors that had at least between 20 and 50 people were their suite. They were the most profitable. Why? Because their data is so sensitive, they have to protect it. They can't have sensitive confidential information, you know, danger of getting hacked. And accountants, CPAs are the same. Actually, they're probably two of the top ones in terms of having to protect that data. They will pay for that. They'll pay for the top level of IT security. That's why they're whales. So first thing is look after, see what else you can do for your existing whale clients. Second thing is your marketing now should be almost exclusively on we want to go after these lawyers, solicitors with between 20 and 50 people working with them. And you know, look how much easier, how much easier is it to say that than saying, oh, no, we're going after everybody. You're looking for a referral from somebody. Who's a good client for you? Uh, anybody, any business. How can anybody refer you, or give you a referral when you're saying anyone in business is good for us? No, no, I want lawyers, solicitors who've got between 20 and 50 people. Um, there'll be a new characteristics of them. You might have six or seven characteristics. This is what they're like. Um, and then the third strategy is the really interesting one with the sardines. So you've identified maybe three in 10 of your clients are losing money. What do you do with them? And then as a lot of people do nothing. Okay. They don't do anything. The ones who are proactive will do things like putting up their pricing. Like, um, I, I'll talk about them a bit more in a moment. The curtain, there was a, a blinds, you know, a company make blinds and curtains. When I gave them the information, they didn't need to think about it. Every order below 200, uh, I, I remember the exact figure, 214 euros losing money. So they put up their prices by 30% straight away. Just on all those smaller orders went up 30%. So, and that can help, but that's probably going to get you a sardine to break even point. Okay, they're not making your money. Um, but we will talk a bit more about this in a while, Pete, because I think there's a, there's a huge opportunity cost to not dealing with the sardines that business owners need to, need to realize. Yeah, you know, I hear from my standpoint because you know, obviously, I'm not a don't have that skill set that you and Jeff have, having been a CPA and looking at a lot of businesses. But I hear I've heard in the past, like, well, I, I got to treat everybody the same. Like, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to treat somebody better than others to mm. talk to our viewers about the people that might have that mindset yeah and look and it's very common and it, it's understandable isn't it we're, we're brought up to be nice to people I mean, you know you don't want to be rude or you don't want to be seen as being rude or nasty to people we're brought up as kids as children as teenagers as adults that you're nice to people you know that is the way we're trained 
so I'm brought up. So when you go into business, this idea of, you know, we think we must treat all clients the same. We think they're all the same. And like they all deserve our respect. Of course we do. You're not going to be nasty to people, sardines. You're not going to be, you know, all we're going to stop, you know, whatever, be nice to them or servicing them, okay? But in pure terms of profitability, all our clients are not the same, okay? And if you have 100 clients in your business, there's a good chance that 50, 10, 15, 20 of them are giving you the bulk of your profits. And you may have, I'm taking a figure at 30%. I've seen it at 40%. I've seen it at 25, 20%. It's never less than 20% of your clients are losing money if you allocate all your costs. And you know, Jeff, if Pete, or sorry, yeah, Jeff, we mentioned Jeff or Grant Pete. If you think about it, the average net profit uh, in most businesses, the average net profit is only 7%. Mm -hmm. So that means for the outside average, obviously some businesses are higher, some are lower. So if your sales are a million and your total costs are 930,000, so you have 70,000 profit left. Now, if you think about it, if you've got a, and most business owners will think, I've got a nice, I've got, you know, a nice group of profitable customers. I know I do. Now, more, almost every business has. So if you've only 70,000 profit in total, and you know that you've got a nice bunch of juicy, profitable clients over here, their total profits could be 100,000, 150,000, 100, let's say 170,000, okay? Let's just get the right. And your total profit is 70. Well, you don't need to be a genius to know that there's 100,000 being lost somewhere else, okay? So, um, and this is what happens. Um, and there was a very interesting post on LinkedIn last week, and I, I just went on and had a look, and it was actually, I think it was an accountant who'd actually fired a client, okay? And they were kind of proud. Of, you don't see that too often. Um, they were kind of proud of it. Um, I think they fired a client because, first of all, I think they were being a bit nasty to some of the staff. They were slow to pay and so on. Um, so there was a nice reaction. There was lots of comments coming in, and I commented on it. And I was looking at the comments, and one guy commented and very similar to what you said earlier on pete about oh uh, well done and so this person was congratulating the accountant for for well done and firing that client and then it was like i know it must be that must have been really tough was it like as business owners we think we're going to be we can't do that because we're going to lose sales and profits and so on so like you said it's a very typical response all clients are good all sales are good and we can say no to anyone and we certainly couldn't think of firing somebody. Okay, that's like, how could we do that? And you don't have to actually, but you could certainly bump up the pricing on all the smaller clients. But I replied to that person who was saying, oh, we can't fire clients and so on. And I, I said, the point most business owners don't realize is that there's an opportunity cost to dealing mm -hmm. with our smaller clients. The ones who you know, are never happy, the ones, you know, the ones we all have, the ones who haggle, you give them a price, they start haggling, yeah, they're slow to pay, they're a pain in the ass, okay? Uh, we all have these clients, okay? I, I would almost say they're certainly, almost certainly sardines, those kind of ones, okay, are quite likely to be sardines. So we have people dealing with them, and I'm sure it's sort of similar over there, Pete. Every, every, client of mine at the moment, every accountant they talk to, every client, everyone talking to, oh, trying to get people like the unemployment rate here is three and a half percent, okay, which is, that means there's three and a half percent of people don't want to work, okay, they'll never work, um, but like trying to get staff, trying to keep staff, it's a major challenge for businesses, and if you think about that, you've got, it's hard to get staff and keep staff, and if you've got 10 people working for you, probably three of them may be working on sardines, doesn't make much sense, does it? So there's an opportunity cost because if you have valuable resources and overhead, your rent and insurance and everything has to be, you know, allocated across your clients. So, and it's going on a sardine, then it means that that person cannot be working on a way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it tra does translate into the, the team that you're building if, like you said, that sardine is wearing out some of your team members. Yeah. Do you think they're going to stay with you? No. no. They're no. going to go find an opportunity where their talents and skills can be used. And so if you're not prioritizing things, 
you're you're putting an unnecessary burden on your team that mm -hmm. is going to affect the cash flow because you know yeah. I know Jeff had, had talked for years about when you reprioritize your 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 client base and you put the right time to the sardine I mean to the well the sardines and the whales meaning. Yeah. You feed the whales, you starve the sardines. It's nothing personal. If you want to have a relationship with a person outside of business, that's your choice. Yeah. But if your job is to improve the growth and the profitability and the cash flow of your mm -hmm. business, yeah. you as an owner have to say, I have to take the leadership role to make our team members know that these are our whales and they get our time because they're paying us. Our paycheck is signed by our clients. I mean, it's, and if they're yeah. signing by sardines, those are the signatures you don't want because yeah. they're the ones that are going to wear you out. Yeah, that's no, so true, Pete. And you know what? If you if you want if you're a business owner listening to this, you want to improve the morale of your team and people. It's a very easy way to do it. You go to them and say. Who are those clients and customers that you do not like dealing with? That when the phone rings, you're going, oh, no, it's not John yeah. and Mary or whatever. Come up with a list of them. And I bet you if you look at them, they're probably sardines. If you really have a good look at them, they're probably sardines. Now, if you say to your people, okay, let's just get start getting, even get rid of one. Let's start getting rid of these people. I think it's going to be a massive boost to morale because... They won't have to, not only will they not have to deal with them, but you're actually going out there saying to them, guys, I want to make your lives easier. And I think that's massive, you know, to do that and help your, your team and your people is huge. And of course, you know, you can take them and say, okay, we're not dealing with that pain anymore. Let's go over here now. We know where whales are. Let's see what else we can do for these people over here. And guaranteed, your people will like dealing with these whale planes. Because generally speaking, they're, they're good to deal with. They're nice people. They'll pay you on time. They'll give you repeat business. They'll give you referrals. And they're a good fit for your business. And that's often why they're whales, because what you do, the value you deliver uh, meets their need very, very well. And that's why they pay you extra. Like, for example, that IT company and the, the lawyers and solicitors, the reason why they're whales is because they're paying them the top rate. If, if the IT company has, you know, 10 possible options on their IT security, the solicitor is taking all 10 of them. They're paying them the top rate. They're paying them. They're getting most of their services because they need it. And they value that protection. It's so important to their business. They will value that protection because it means they can go to bed at night and sleep easy and know that their, their sensitive, confidential client information is safe. Yeah. yeah. I know. You know, back, I don't know how many, when Jeff was was when we were working through some philosophy things, he always impressed upon me about adding value, number one. And you do that by paying people on time or before, because you can always know when somebody wants to talk to you is they answer the phone. If somebody doesn't answer the phone and they take two, three days to get back with you, you're not a priority for them because yeah. they're saying to themselves is, I value my time. Mm -hmm. I value my relationships. And if you're a tiny piece of their business, you're not going to get a chunk of their time. So I always pay people right away because yeah. I want, and then refer people if they're the type of people I want to do business with, because I want to be a higher priority for everybody I deal with. And yeah. maybe I'm not paying them top rates, but I, that they're not calling me and saying, where's my money? They yes. get their money right away because I want them to know I value their services yes. and I'm going to pay for them by by showing them that I am a priority and um, I'm I prioritize them by paying them. Because yes. if you don't have an exchange of money, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. And people certainly want things for free, but they're not going to build. I can't go down to the local grocery store and I said, I did a favor for Neil and I did this, this, and this, and they'll say, "Okay, yeah, where's the cash?" It's like, <laughs> you know that 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 we pay in currency, yeah. and so the value of the value you give to a business demands a higher value of compensation. 
Yeah. So what do you yeah. think when yeah. somebody was talking to you? Like, I always love that analogy when you broke that down, that 91% of the profits were coming in. What's the reaction when people go, like they see a few clients doing 91% and yeah. then they look at all those other clients and they're going, whoa, yeah. what, what are they saying to you? Yeah, I can I can remember it very well because it was my first time doing that analysis and the the owner of the business actually, you know, I knew the guy even before I started working for him. It was kind of a coincidence. It was an electronic subcontract company, Brendan. He was a lovely man. And I, I can remember the reaction when I went into him because so I'm saying to him, almost half their clients were losing money. Okay, they were they were red. I gave them a, a red color on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and he's looking at this and it's like like some of these were their oldest clients. Some of them were with them like, they're with us 15 years, they're with us 18 years, you know, John, oh, they're with us 18 years, they're a good client. You know, it's kind of like, it's like, you, it's not, what's that saying about telling your child they're ugly or something, you know, it's like looking into a pram and saying, oh, that's an ugly baby. Like, you know, nobody wants to hear that, do they? Um, so yeah, there is, there is kind of resistance. There is that kind of, oh no, no, no. Yeah, I can see the figure, but I don't believe it. You know, that kind of way. Um, and that, look, it, I understand that. Okay, I totally understand that. What you're doing is you're presenting people with information. Is that I always give them, give them a week to digest it, okay? <laughs> to even think mm -hmm. about it. Uh, and then go back and have a discussion about it. But even if they don't want to do anything about the sardines, we want to focus on the whales, okay? Focus on the whales. Um, and, do you know, the... I'm just thinking about your your viewers or maybe listeners, Pete. And the the thing about the sardines is, let's just say you're, you're somebody listening to this, they're a business owner, and they know they have sardines. And maybe thinking like the the guy on the LinkedIn post last week, kind of saying, "Oh, it's hard. You know, every sale is good, and how can you fire clients and so on?" It's the opportunity cost. Okay, so at the moment, if you have a client and they're losing your money. You have people and custom resources going on to that person and you know they can be taken away and put on a whale and i have one or two examples in mind actually Pete, just to illustrate this and mm -hmm. you know some of the examples i'll talk about now i probably spoke about on some of the earlier podcasts so if anyone heard them there'll be a little bit of continuity so there was the printer i worked with we did about 60 orders every month and i found out that three they had three whales yeah they had two hospitals and a college. They were very profitable. But a lot of the other ones were one-off orders and they lost money. Okay, the one-off orders lost money. And certainly one-off orders for the public lost money because they'd only come along every year or two. And the printer, the printer, I remember one example, I called her Mrs. Murphy. I have some logs and videos done about this. There was a story in my book. So she came along and her father like this this printing business was around for years so her father i think had dealt with the printer's father it kind of went way back you know like so the printer came out and met mrs murphy and spent half an hour with her going through the design she wanted invitations for her son's 21st birthday party so i spent half an hour with her going through the designs and colors and so on and then she went away and the printer had her daughter's, this woman's, her daughter's email. So he sent on samples. And then the sister-in-law wanted an input into it. And it was getting all these emails flying over and back. Okay, so this went on and on and on. Um, and, you know, the woman was charged 70 euros at the end. Okay. And I estimated that it should have been 200. Okay, 200 euros. Now, I have to give them credit because they bumped up their pricing for one-off orders from 70 to 140. And then later they bumped it up to 200. So they were effectively discouraging one-off orders. Okay. Mm -hmm. so obviously, if a hospital or college came along, they'd say, you know, they'd welcome them. They wouldn't be discouraging them. But one-off orders in the public and small companies that came to them and ordered like twice a year. But if you think about the printer, he spent half an hour with Mrs. Murphy. Okay. And probably more time. It could have been an hour going into that order. So let's just say he had four Mrs. Murphy's in a week, okay? And that's four hours that the printer has put in to people who are going to be charged 70 euros. That's four hours of his time. Now, so what could the printer have done with that? And this is exactly what happened. What could he do with those four hours? And this is exactly what happened because when they, 
when they bumped up their pricing, what happened is they realized, and it is a bit scary, they realized that when customers came along in the week or two after they put up the pricing, they were used to paying 70. Now they're told 140. Then they were told 200. Now some paid it, but most bought at the price increase. Okay. So what happened is the printer sent them down the road to their competitor. Okay. And we thought this is really funny because the competitor, yeah. the competitor was probably charging 70 euros as well. And they thought that my client had, had kind of lost their mind. But they, yeah. because they'd worked it out, they knew this is costing us 200. We we're charging 70. We cannot continue to charge 70. So they put it up and they put it up and it was actually, they knew what was going to happen. It was to discourage. So now the printer has suddenly got four hours a week free. Yeah. So what could he do with those? Now he knew the two, he knew the two hospitals and the college are very profitable. Mm-hmm. Saying to him, have you ever spoken to them about extra orders or whatever he hadn't? But he now had the time, okay, he now had the time to go and talk to the hospital and realize that they do they got 70 forms printed every imagine the hospital. You know, hospitals all paperwork and forms. The printer did two a month. When they went and spoke to them and asked some questions, they realized the hospital got 70 forms printed. So obviously they were going to other printers as well in the town, in the city. So over the course of the next few months, the printer got two extra forms from the first. So they went from doing two a month, four a month, okay? And these were, you know, thousands of forms. They mm-hmm. had the design done. The design was all done. They just had to set it up and hit the button. Boom, off you go. There was no design involved, no toying and froing with designs and colors or whatever, okay? These mm-hmm. forms might change once every 10 years, right? You know? Um, so... But now the time and effort and the resource, the slot that, that Mrs. Murphy had in the printer, in his printer plan was now gone to where. So their costs hadn't changed. But you're now taking his time and resource from a sardine over to a whale. Mm-hmm. And now you have the same cost, but your sales are going up by multiples and multiples. Right. And their, their profit, they generated, started generating an extra 30,000 profit a month, a month. When yeah. they put those changes through, like that's just massive, huge. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Tim Ferriss that four-hour work week years yeah. ago. I thought, man, I'm going to work more than four hours, yeah. and I didn't even connect with the eighty twenty principle behind it. Yeah. And every anybody that knows his story is, yeah, he got super focused on those four hours that produced everything when he reprioritize things and i think for our viewers we just want them to understand if you have somebody that can analyze like yourself that can really has spent years in in the environment that analyzed this you always looked at that and you could see patterns that were developing yeah. and if you can't step back and see these patterns you're going to continue down the road and cash flow is going to become a problem because you're, you're going to be putting your time into sardines when it should be in the whales. Yeah. So tell our viewers, how can they get a hold of you, Neil? So as we wind down. Yeah, um, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, my website is being revamped at the moment. So LinkedIn is probably the best way, Pete. Um, okay. You know, Brian, you know, I'm down as mastermind, uh, because recovering accountant and, mastermind facilitator i love masterminds as well so yeah if anybody's looking you know you can drop me a note and um happy to chat absolutely and for my viewers over here on this side of the pond yeah we're a global economy now there's no restrictions as far as like i gotta have my my guy right next door no we can the information that we have now is global so the idea and i want to encourage our viewers, my viewers that, you know, share this with people that need to understand how simple it is, but common sense is not common practice. And so share it with your friends and say, look, if you don't take a a look at your business differently and change your mindset to where you're, you're spending the times feeding the whales and you're spending too much time on the sardines you're not going to be around because I guarantee you, your competitor, if they get this concept, they're going to fly by you like 
like I don't know what the fastest fish in the ocean is. Maybe a dolphin. They'll fly by you like you're standing still and you're going to wonder what happened. Mm-hmm. And you're going to say, well, you spent too much time with sardines. Yeah. And they're okay to eat occasionally, but they're not as good as the way out there. Yeah. So thank. So what would you tell our viewers? What would be the one thing you want them to take home from our time together today? It's probably that, that point you made. About the, the, the opportunity cost. Uh, if you work out your whales with sardines, yes, go focus on the whales. But the sardines probably need to be dealt with as well because you're putting scarce resources into a sardine that can be put on a whale. And, you know, it's harder and harder to find people. So you want most, if not all, your people working on whale planes and not sardines. You don't want yes. that. Man, I love that. So if, if you just want to put your comments below on LinkedIn and you want Neil to address them in future podcasts or engage with them before then, yeah. just put, put your comments down there. I mean, he's he's literally very active on LinkedIn, so it's not like he's not going to get back to you. So thank you much, Neil. I appreciate you being with us and helping our business owners grow and increase their profit margins. Yeah. Thanks very much, Pete, for having me. Thank you.